In this video, I am going to show you a very simple process for improving your sound using Audacity. Whatever your purpose is, professional voiceover, audiobook narration, content creation, or podcasting, you can make your recording sound much better using the process I'm about to show you. This is a five-step process, and there are actually two ways to use it. The first way is automatic, and the second way is manual. In the automatic process, you will do it in one click. In the manual process, you adjust everything yourself. I'll show you both methods in detail. Let's start with the automatic process. This is a raw recording, and if I play it, you can hear how it sounds right now. Some people claim that all aerators are created equal. Well, we beg to differ. Ranch works past. As you heard, the raw recording volume seems quite low. I'll process this recording with just one click. Watch how I do it. I'll double click to select the audio, then go to the tools menu. I will go to apply macro and choose a macro, for example, clear vocal. In your audacity, you will not see such macros. I will tell you in a moment where you can get such macros. The audio improves instantly with just one click. The macro has all the necessary audio processing inside it. Let's listen to the audio and see how much it has improved. Some people claim that all aerators are created equal. Well, we beg to differ. Ranch works pasture aerators are engineered with forward you can see that with just one click, I've improved the audio a lot, and it's not only about increasing the volume. The macro also adjusts the loudness, balance, and EQ, all automatically. You can either build your own macros or use the ones I've already created. If you're interested in using my macros, you can visit the page linked in the description. I have an EQ and macro pack that includes 11 different macros you can use to make your audio sound better. You can also check out the Audacity bundle, which includes these macros, several Audacity courses, and personal feedback from me through the lessons. All the links will be in the description if you'd like to explore them. Now, let's get back to Audacity and see how to improve the sound manually. This is the original recording, and we'll follow a five-step process. For each step, I will explain why we are doing that step, and how to execute it. Step 1 is to normalize the audio. Normalization means setting the peak level of your audio. We will see in a moment what the peak means, and how it affects your audio. To normalize, select your track by double-clicking inside it, and go to the Effect menu. Then Volume and Compression, Normalize. You can see the configuration window for the Normalize effect. I will go to the default preset so you know which value needs to be adjusted. In the default settings, you can see that the peak amplitude is set at minus 1 dB. We'll change it to minus 3 dB. You may ask why we would set it to minus 3 dB. Well, to understand that, we have to check the ACX audio requirements. The ACX standard is used for audiobooks, but you can also use it for voiceover work. Following the ACX standard helps you measure your audio quality consistently. If you can follow all the requirements from ACX, your audio will sound clean, professional and will be good enough for professional voiceover, audiobooks, podcasts, and content creation. Let's get back to Audacity. You now know why we have to set minus 3 as the peak value in normalize settings, but how it will affect our audio. We can understand that even before we apply the normalize effect. There is an external tool in Audacity called ACX Check. I will use it, but you may not have this tool. I will put a link to a description of where this ACX Check tool can be downloaded and installed. The ACX Check shows three technical measurements of the audio. For now, we are interested in the peak level. The current peak level of this audio is minus 12.78 dB. The required peak level is minus 3 according to the ACX. That means the peak level of this audio is lower than what is required. If we set the peak level to minus 3, the level will increase. Please note that all the audio levels we are talking about are of negative value. That's why minus 3 is more than minus 12, and in this meter, the farther you go, the more the volume. From all these analyses, we now know that the audio level will increase if we adjust the peak to minus 3 dB. However, that may not happen for every recording, and that is not an issue. The main point is to set the peak level at minus 3, so that the later processing becomes easier. Now, I'll go back to normalize, set the peak to minus 3 dB, and apply it. When you normalize, the audio volume may increase or decrease depending on the original level. For example, this recording had a peak of minus 12 dB, so normalizing to minus 3 dB means about a 9 dB increase. You can see the waveform grew in height after normalization. That means an increase in the loudness level. Some recordings may have higher peaks to begin with, so in those cases, the volume might decrease. Whatever the case, normalizing to minus 3 dB sets your audio to a consistent standard. After normalization, I will check the ACX values again. It is not required to check the ACX values to get a better sound. 
I am doing this to understand how audio processing is affecting my audio quality. Checking again with ACX, we see the peak is now minus 3 dB, RMS is minus 23.18 dB, but it's still not within the target range. We'll continue processing, and let's see what happens. Step 2 is the noise reduction. Noise reduction may or may not be necessary depending on your recording. This audio isn't very noisy, as you can see the ACX shows the noise floor is passing. However, this isn't the case most of the time. After normalization, you will see that your audio is failing on the noise floor. The audio sample I am working with is from a professional voiceover artist, and he has a very good room setup. We may not have such a proper setup, so let's explore how to reduce background noise. If your recording has a loud hiss or constant background sound, you'll definitely need noise reduction. Please note that, only constant hissing noise or white background noise can be reduced using Audacity's noise reduction. If you have irregular noise like dog barking, car honks, or other people talking nearby, Audacity's noise reduction will not reduce that. Audacity's noise reduction is a two-step process. On the first step, you have to give Audacity a noise sample. Based on that sample, Audacity will know what the noise sounds like and remove that kind of noise. To give this noise sample, select a part of the audio that only has background noise, no speaking, and go to Effect, Noise Removal and Repair, Noise Reduction. Though I have selected the noise sample from the beginning, you can select a noise sample from anywhere in the audio as long as that is the noise you are trying to remove. For step 1, you have to click Get Noise Profile. This tells Audacity what your noise sounds like. After giving the noise sample to Audacity, you have to select the audio from where you want to reduce the noise. For us, it would be the whole track, and I will select everything by double-clicking. Go to the noise reduction effect again. This time we will configure the noise reduction settings. You'll see three main settings. Noise reduction, dB, that is how much noise to remove. Sensitivity, that is how aggressively Audacity detects noise. Frequency smoothing bands, helps fill small gaps left after noise reduction. Let's explore each setting in detail, starting with sensitivity. The higher the sensitivity, the aggressive audacity will be in reducing noise. While that may look like a good choice on the surface, that is actually not the case. The more aggressive you set the sensitivity, the harsher the audio will be after noise reduction. Noise reduction introduces harshness and makes the audio thinner. So the sensitivity should be good enough to detect the noise, but not too much. A sensitivity of 6 works well for voiceover. For frequency smoothing bands, you should use 6. As I said earlier, noise reduction introduces a gap in audio data that makes the sound harsh. Frequency smoothing bands try to remove that gap so that the audio does not feel thin. For voice recordings, a setting of 6 works well for all 3, 6 dB noise reduction, sensitivity 6, and smoothing 6. However, in some cases, the amount of noise reduction needed is more than 6. You can calculate the amount from the current noise floor. You have to calculate how much noise reduction is needed to reach minus 60 dB. For example, if your current noise floor is minus 50 dB, you will need a 10 dB reduction to reach minus 60 dB. Whatever the case, the noise reduction amount should not be more than 12 dB. That will introduce noticeable harshness in the audio. Sometimes people listen to their audio through a laptop speaker, so the harshness goes unnoticed. But if you listen to it through good headphones, you will notice the audio sounds thin after too much noise reduction. For this example, I will set it to 12 dB. If you need more than 12 dB noise reduction to reach minus 60 dB in noise floor in the ACX check, your recording setup is not right. I'll apply the effect and check with ACX values. Please note that Audacity's noise reduction has limited capability. For better noise reduction, you have to use a third-party plugin. As this is a beginner-friendly Audacity tutorial, I will keep the scope limited to Audacity. You can see the noise floor has now dropped from around minus 60 dB to minus 72 dB. Now we've done two steps, normalize and noise reduction. Step 3 is EQ, equalization. The order of the effects is important. Because each effect prepares the audio for the next effect. If you mess up the order, you may not get the intended result with audio processing. If you want all the steps and their configuration as a PDF guide, you can get it from me. I will put a link to get this PDF guide where I have shown all the steps with screenshots. Let's get back to Audacity and discuss the EQ process in a bit of detail. EQ is a complex effect, but we'll keep it simple with a basic EQ. To do the EQ, go to Effect, EQ and Filter, Filter Curve EQ. We do the EQ by drawing a curve here. I will go back to the default preset so that you know what change I will be making. This is the default EQ curve which is a flat line at 0 dB. On the left side, you can see some positive numbers on the upper half and negative numbers on the lower half. 
On the x-axis below, you can see frequency numbers like 20 Hz, 40 Hz to 20 kHz. EQ is the process of manipulating volumes by frequency. In the default preset, the line is at 0 dB for all frequencies. If you made an adjustment at the line in a particular frequency, then we are adding an EQ to the audio. That's the theory, but what should we actually do for our recording? For a voice recording, I will start with a factory preset. From the factory preset, go to the low roll-off for speech. That means, it will give us an EQ curve that is used to roll off the low end of the speech. You can see the curve that is rolled off in the low frequency areas. Why this roll off? Well, to understand that, you have to know a bit about our talking frequencies. While we talk, it is actually a combination of overlapping frequencies. The lowest frequency is called the fundamental frequency. If you search the internet for fundamental frequency, you will see that it starts from 80 Hz for men and around 130 Hz for women. That means, our voice does not generate frequencies lower than 80 Hz in general. So if we take out the lower frequencies from our recording, it will not take anything from our voice. However, there can be some noise in the low frequency areas. A low roll-off can take down such noise if there is any. This roll-off has been started from 100 Hz. I will drag the dots so that the roll begins from 80 Hz. If you click on these lines, such dots appear. I am cutting off frequency below 80 Hz, which is also called a high-pass filter. This removes low-frequency noise, like hum or vibration, that doesn't exist in human speech. You can stop here, but if you want your voice to sound brighter, you can slightly boost frequencies above 4 kHz. However, be careful, too much can make your voice sound harsh. Please note that I click on the line, and then those dots appear. I can drag them to adjust the lines. For now, I'll stick to the high-pass filter only, a simple and safe starting point. If I drag the dots out of this window, they will disappear. Apply it, and the EQ step is done. Step 4 is compression. This is another complex effect, and many people do not understand why to use it. Also many people use it in a wrong settings that has no impact on the audio. If you pay close attention to the waveform, you can see that some are taller and some are shorter. The taller waveforms are louder than the shorter waveforms. In technical terms, the difference between louder and softer talks is called the dynamic range. The job of the compressor is to reduce the dynamic range. In other words, the compressor reduced the loudness gap between the loudest and softest parts of the audio. By doing so, the audio sound is balanced and every part of the audio can be heard smoothly. You can apply compressor from effect, volume and compression, compressor. At first glance, it looks like a lot of configuration, but you can configure it easily using a factory preset. From factory preset, choose the lead vocals. We will not use the lead vocals exactly, but it has some generic configuration that works for voiceover. We can use the look ahead, attack and release as it is. In the compression curve, we will adjust two settings, threshold and ratio. A compressor becomes active when audio passes the threshold level. For example, if I set the threshold to minus 25.6 dB, the compressor will be active on those points where the audio is louder than minus 25.6 dB. However, if I set a new threshold point like minus 13.9, the compressor will be active only when audio levels pass minus 13.9 dB. So now the question is, what is the ideal value for the threshold? Well, there is no single ideal value for the threshold. It depends on the recording itself and how much compression you are looking for. For a moderate compression, I would suggest using something between minus 12 and minus 18. For this audio, I will set it to minus 15. If I see the audio is too much compressed, I would use a higher value than minus 15. If the audio needs more compression, then I would have to use something lower than minus 15. We will see in a moment if this audio is ideally compressed, or if we should do anything different. The ratio is the actual amount of compression. If the audio exceeds the threshold, it will be compressed by the ratio we set. For example, if I set the ratio to 2, then for every 2 dB increase in audio level after threshold, we will hear only 1 dB. These are technical definitions, but in simple words, the higher the ratio you set, the more compressed it will be. The compressor settings allow you to set a ratio of 100, but it is impractical. For our use case, the ratio has to be something between 2 and 4. Once again, like the threshold, you may have to use a different ratio if the compression is too much or less, depending on the situation. Let's say I will use the ratio 2.7 for this audio. We do not need to change any other settings for a typical voiceover. I will apply these settings. You can see some of the waveform peaks shrink after applying the compressor, that's normal. That means the compressor has compressed something. But is it too much or too little? To understand that, we have to apply one final effect. Before that, let's check the condition of ACX values. 
I will go to analyze, ACX check. At the beginning of this processing, we set the peak to minus 3. But after the compression, the peak has decreased to minus 7.76. Because the compressor has compressed the higher peaks. It is the normal behavior of the compressor. However, to understand if the compressor has worked okay, we have to check the RMS. The RMS should be in the accepted range after we apply another effect after the compressor. That is out final step 5, normalize. We already saw how to apply the normalize effect. I will set the peak to minus 3 dB again using normalize. Normalize if the only effect that I am using twice in the processing flow. If we check ACX again, everything passes, peak, RMS, and noise floor are all within range. The RMS has passed, which means the compressor was okay. This recording is now ready and sounds much better. Let's listen to a few seconds of the final result. Some people claim that all aerators are created equal. Well, we beg to differ. Ranchworks pasture aerators are engineered with forged ranch tech You can see that by following these five steps, your sound improves significantly. This process is a great starting point for anyone looking to improve their voiceover or spoken audio like audiobooks or podcasts quality. However, there are some special tricks when you are processing for voiceover or audiobooks. If you want to learn those special tricks, please click the card on the screen. On the left, the video will take you to the advanced processing for voiceover. On the right, the video will take you to the proper processing for audiobooks. Thanks for watching.